Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Thank you so much for checking in today. Today is kind of a special day. You guys know that I love doing knife reviews. I've done a lot of Topps knife reviews, but this one is a unique knife with a very unique story that I'm gonna share with you today. And today we're gonna to be talking about the Topps Moggason Ranger. Now, this is a combat knife. And this knife was designed in honor of the actual Moggason Rangers. The Moggason Rangers were formed just a few days after D-Day in World War II. They were basically a special operations unit that was formed from a group of Cherokee Indians. So what we're gonna do today is cut away. I'm gonna do a quick specs rundown show you the ins and outs of this knife. I'm gonna do some practical application out here in the woods. Now I know this is a combat knife. I don't claim to be an operator by any means. We're just gonna do some woods tasks with this knife to show you the capabilities of what it can do. I'm gonna share with you a story of the Moggason Rangers. It's a really awesome story. And then we'll bring it back 360 for some final thoughts. Folks, it doesn't get any better than this. Knives, awesome stories, the woods, the video starts now. Now I know the Moggason Ranger was designed as a combat fighting knife, but we're gonna test it out and see how well it does feather sticking. Now this piece of wood, just, it isn't the best, just lying around out here. Not bad for a quarter inch of steel, folks. It's doing a good job. That saber grind is really helping to assist that. And just choking up with that choil, I'm getting really nice control. And the jimping isn't overly aggressive to where it's hurting my thumb or hand. So you could really choke up and have really good control on this knife as you're getting in close. Next up, I'm gonna be doing a tip test. I do not recommend doing this with your knives. It will avoid the warranty as being abuse, but you folks wanna see how well uh, this knife is gonna hold up to a lot of different circumstances. So here we go. One thing Topps prides himself on is their heat treat. And that differential heat treat is outstanding on these blades. Here we go, pry it the other way. Well, I think we proved that uh, the tip will hold up under extreme and just to show you no movie magic tip is still pristine so we're going to test out the uh, moccasin ranger sharpening a point on this old tree limb that's just almost petrified
It's almost like chipping away at rock. This tree limbs so hard. But it does a good job. Sweet spot on this blade is like right here for the maximum effort out of it. But uh, scales feel really good in the hand, chopping. Okay, we're gonna do some light batoning with the Moggason Ranger. You guys know that I am not a huge fan of batoning with my knives, but you guys love to see that stuff, so I'm gonna showcase it. I'm using a piece of pine limb now. This is been out here drying in the hot sun probably seven or eight years in the drought conditions that we've had out here in San Diego. So I thought, hey, why not use this? Kind of like simulating if we were gonna do a one stick fire, we'll process it down a little bit. There's a lot of twist in this wood. Of course, the Moggason Ranger is just blowing right through this stuff like it's a splitting mall. You can just see how the grain of the wood is just almost like a drill bit. It's just all twisted. But the Moggason Ranger seems to be handling it. Take it down a little bit more. And then let's try it on a bigger piece. Yeah, it's just breaking apart. There we go. Well, I think we proved that the Moggason Ranger is more than up for the task of batoning. Okay, for the final three tests on the Moggason Ranger, I thought I would shake it up a little bit and we would cut some leather stock with it. I have about an inch, inch and a quarter diameter hemp rope that I had bought that I taped off to do these knife tests. And then uh, some heavy gauge nylon webbing, kind of like almost toe strap or uh, like uh, military cargo tie down strap material, which I thought would work really well in testing out the Moggason Ranger. So first off, let's cut some leather with it. Not a problem at all. And what I find interesting, you know, this is a quarter inch of steel and it just does a great job at uh, slicing. Speaking of slicing, let's see if we can slice through this webbing. Almost, not a problem. Now, if this tie down strap was secure and had some tension on it, I mean, if we had to cut through it, it would not be a problem. I'm just trying not to cut myself right now on camera. But not a problem at all with the webbing. And then, let's see. Nice clean cut. Speaking of clean cuts, let me put the lanyard on, getting that back seat grip on here and see if we can't slice this. Not a problem. That's me right there. Let's get it where I can get a good slice with it. 
Let's try the other end. I love chopping stuff. All right. Try to do this right. I'll cut myself. Like butter. Well, I think we proved that the Moccasin Ranger is more than capable of slicing, dicing, cutting, chopping, all of the above. Now, as promised in the intro, I was going to give you a little history on the name of this knife and how it came about. First off, I have to give 100% full credit to Blade mag.com in their knife history section they did the write-up on the uh, moggison rangers from world war ii and they highlighted the gentleman who is accredited with the longest knife throw kill in military history and that gentleman's name is george e skeeter vaughn he holds the distinction of making the most fantastic knife throw in recorded history and considering the circumstances surrounding his legendary feat is most likely will remain his grasp on that honor for a long time to come. As an American Cherokee Indian whose given name was Gray Otter, Vaughn was a member of an elite army unit called the U.S. Moggasin Rangers. All 15 members of which were American Indians, especially gifted with excellent night sight, at the age of 19, Vaughn enlisted in the U.S. Cavalry in 1942 and later landed with his unit on Omaha Beach two days after D-Day in June of 1944. Two weeks later, the Moggasin Rangers were formed. On a snowy November night in 1944, Skeeter and five other members of the Moggasin Rangers were given the assignment of knocking out a German bunker with pillbox on the Sigfield line to make way for an American advance. Belly down in the snow behind the bunker concealed on the brow of the hill. In a small stand of timber about 35 yards away, Vaughn and his men were faced with the problem of how to neutralize the emplacement. Outside the bunker was a German sentry with his back to the hill where Vaughn and his men were positioned. The sentry had to be eliminated and eliminated silently so he could not warn the other German soldiers. There was too much open ground for one of the rangers to cross it and silence the sentry, and a gunshot would alert the enemy. A sergeant and commander of the patrol, Vaughn, was asked by one of his men if he could take out the sentry by throwing his bayonet. As a boy, Vaughn had lived on Indian reservations and was taught all about weapons by his grandfather, Old Limping Bear, a Cherokee born in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. Skeeter's training included throwing knives and tomahawks, and he had put that training to use prior to the war, hurling hawks in 16-inch knives made from old bayonets in performances at rodeos and in a Doc Willitson's big medicine show that toured the West. However, the training was about to undergo a test like no other. Skeeter crawled from the timber as far as he dared and stood hoping he would not be spotted. The sentry's back still towards him Skeeter threw the knife with a high trajectory, aiming about three feet above the sentry's head. The knife turned silently over and over in its long downhill pinwheel flight. The sentry dropped without a peep face down in the snow. Considering the distance thrown later measured at 87 feet, it was probably the longest successful knife throw in the annals of knife throwing and in combat. Now for some final thoughts on the Moggasin Ranger by Tops. You've seen it chop, you've seen the wood stuff, but this knife is a combat knife. That's why I had to uh, add cutting the leather, cutting the webbing, and uh, chopping like the rope. That, uh... And this knife just does a great job with that. I love that hunter's point. Kind of reminds me of the old school frontier knives. Of back in the day. At first I thought a quarter inch of steel was going to be too much for this, but I was surprised at how well this knife cut. I mean, the way that the blades profiled perfect 
with that. It's just a good slicer, a good chopper. So if you're in a combat situation, I firmly believe that you're not gonna have any problem with this blade. And it would make a great hunting blade as well. I love the choil being able to get up in like that. You could actually gut and skin deer with this knife, no problem at all. Overall length of this blade, I think is spot on for this style of knife being at 11 three quarter inches. And then the cutting edge of the knife at six and a half inches, I think it is a perfect complement to the design of this blade. The handle feels really good and the jimping is not over pronounced where it's just gonna cut into your hand. And what I like is they've put an angle on the top and we got enough angle on the cutting edge to where right down the center is where the meat of this knife is. And it just feels really good. It doesn't feel too heavy at all. It's got a nice pommel on there. If you need to uh, crack stuff open, break things. And I just can't say enough good things about this. All right, let's talk a little bit about the sheath on this knife. It is a uh, taco style sheath. That means that the Kydex is folded over. Tops takes great pride in fitting their knives to the sheath and getting a good fit. No clanking around at all, nice and tight fit in there. And when you snap it in, so it's gonna be secure. They have a spring steel metal clip on the back that will rotate 360 degrees. So the sheath, very good on this knife. As always, you guys know that we rate stuff on the channel between one and five. Considering everything I've seen, even the story is outstanding. I'm gonna give this five stars here on the channel. This is a great blade. I love the linen micarta scales on there. It's just a great feeling knife. And as always, Topps does a great job with their heat treat, but they have a lot of cool designs in their catalog from years ago that are still Hall of Fame knives and I would consider this a Hall of Fame knife. Huge shout out to the designer of this blade. Mass respect to the Mogasin Rangers and their sacrifice in World War II that paved the way for uh, the Pathfinders and uh, the soldiers of today. So with that, thank you so much for watching folks. I'll leave links in the video description below if you wanna learn more about this blade and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.